Hi, this is Tony Hansen from Trading from Main Street, and as I'm getting ready to teach my next trading boot camp, I thought, you know, what better way is there to show you what my classes are really all about than to share with you a segment from one of my previous classes. The following video was recorded right near the beginning of our final session last summer as I was sharing how each of the tools in my trading system come together in managing a trade. It's a short that formed live in the dollar krona pair. Now in this video I follow that short trade from start to finish. We are scanning as that trade pops up on the radar and we follow it looking at different entry triggers, stop placement, and particularly trade management. It illuminates not only the importance of understanding momentum and how to identify your target on a trade, but also how to integrate different time frames to adjust that target as the trade unfolds, thus giving you the optimal exit point. Whether or not you decide to join me for this month's boot camp, please take the next 20 minutes and just watch this trade and the many lessons that it contains and hopefully you'll see the value in it and I will definitely see you next week. So take care and have a wonderful day. So let's go and look at some of these other pairs here quick and see if we have something that is doing that. For example here, we have a really good example where we are seeing this shift in momentum taking place. And what we're looking at now is this is an example of a stronger pullback where it helped change momentum with just a little bit of an avalanche continuation pattern right here. And then it formed this two wave pattern, which is another avalanche strategy. And what you're seeing now at this point is this is actually a clear cut short pattern on this five minute time frame. But, you know, for those of you that attended the class over the last couple of weeks, what you'll have to keep in mind is that it's not just one time frame that matters. You have to look at where it's taking place in the context of the larger trend. So on this five minute time frame, we have a great pattern that is forming. You know, it's forming a short strategy, an avalanche, and if we were looking at just this alone, I'd be looking at a target zone right around this 200 period moving average on the five minute time frame. And the reason for that is that we have a lot of congestion that is going to be hitting with previous highs, previous lows, other support zone that's all going to be coming together at that point. And this pullback here was a bit more extreme than some of these other corrections. And that tells me that usually if there's a continuation where it's following the most extreme move that you've seen of the day, typically that continuation is going to be a little bit more gradual. It's not going to usually have quite the same momentum as uh, the original drop. But to see now, is this going to offer us a really good continuation pattern or not, we need to look at the context of where it's taking place. And that's looking at these larger time frames. So up here we have a 15 minute chart, and then up here we have a daily chart. And the first thing that catches my eye is the daily chart because it is really where you want to see your strategy if you're looking at intraday trades. You really want to look at where it's taking place on the daily time frame because that can really limit what you're going to get out of a setup. And what we see here on this daily is that really overall we have a slower period of congestion where the market has pulled back gradually into this 20 and 50 period zone of support here. And so it's not really uh, a strong context for a short. So going into a short, we'd have to think of it more as a uh, scalpish type of pattern. Looking at the 15 minute time frame, we do still have this potential for flush here. And we're getting a trigger right now. And what you can see here is again more support back in here. Now for dropping down to time your entry on a position, usually what you want to do is you want to use a smaller time frame chart even still than what you see your setup forming on. So you can use a tick chart or you can use a one minute time frame. So here's our one minute time frame and this is the pattern that we were following develop. And 
an initial trigger would have been off of this high when this channel broke here. But we weren't seeing it at that time. We were seeing it when it pulled back up into this avalanche zone. And then here is our trigger, which we're, we're just seeing right now. And what you'll often find is that if you do miss an initial trigger on an avalanche, and for those of you that are new to my terminology, an avalanche is basically your first continuation on the short side off of a, an upside move. So if you have an uptrend, for example, like this, and you have something that flushes that is coming down to, a lot of times it'll come down to the lower channel zone and basically hug that channel. It'll be like a, a five minute, 20 period moving average or a 15 minute, 20 period moving average. When it hugs that zone, that is a pattern that I call an avalanche. And that's what we're seeing triggering here and giving us this continuation move that we're seeing right now. And oftentimes, if you miss your first trigger, which is the lower channel of the second push, so in an avalanche, oftentimes you're going to see two waves. You can take a trigger when that second channel breaks or when the lower end of the entire channel breaks if you don't see these two waves. Your stop traditionally is going to be placed over this high. Now, in this case, we're looking at a continuation pattern that formed where it pulled back up into that original trigger zone. And that is where you can take the setup if you miss the initial trigger. So if you miss the initial trigger, a lot of times it will go quite quickly through it, and you don't want to chase. So if it's coming from at least the middle of this channel, or the upper end of the channel and breaks through the lower channel, you can take that initial bounce and short it into that bounce. And that will give you a secondary setup. And in that case, once it breaks through this previous low, you can use a stop at that point above this high. So you don't have to keep your stop over that entire high anymore. You can use this tighter stop here. And that will tighten up your position and allow you to take a larger position than you normally would. Now, what we're seeing right here is we're kind of nearing that initial zone of support. And overall, like I said, what I'm expecting is that the overall momentum is probably not going to remain as strong as we saw on this flush. And so what that means is that we're seeing an initial support hitting right here. And at this point, we're probably going to see momentum shift, see a slower type of move if it tries to go and retest this zone better, which is what it's probably going to do. Probably going to see a little bit of a bounce here, and then a shift as it comes more into the support zone. Now, this triggered here really quickly on us, but I want to walk through what I do in terms of managing these positions. So we have this position where we have this trigger on this avalanche right here. And as it is moving in our favor, usually when I'm looking to take gains on a position, what I want to do is I want to have um, an order on the books at my target zone. And then as it nears my target, sometimes I'll go to a manual target zone. So on the books, for example, I'm looking at this zone here as our major support level. And so as it's heading into that level, what I'll do is I'll place a, uh, a trade where it closes my position as it's heading into that support. So in this case, we have a zone that's basically between... Um, Let's see, we're looking at between 868 and 847 here at the lower end. So assuming that we're going to get a little bit of a momentum shift, we're going to be looking probably in the middle of that zone around 856, 6.0856 as a zone that you can have as um, your order on the books. Now, typically with an avalanche, one way you can establish and view you know, where that equal zone target is is by creating and using your Fibonacci tool. And you don't use it in the traditional sense. 
in the traditional sense, you're looking at like a move such as this, where you'd be looking at the highs and the lows, and these are going to give you your retracement levels. For example, you can see, you know, it retraced to the 62% level here before it gave us that continuation. But when you're using it for establishing targets, what you can do is use the top of this, and now you want to bracket it where basically your congestion for your continuation pattern, whether it's a bear flag, an avalanche, any sort of period of congestion where you're looking at a continuation type of move. You would put it right through the middle of that, and you want about the same amount of clearance on each side where there's overlap. And this gives you that equal move target zone. But we were looking at um, the possibility that it would not quite hit that equal move because we had those additional support levels that were taking place. So here is the larger view of this 15-minute chart. And now we had that, that trade on the books, basically, as it's coming into the support zone. And what you want to do is as something is coming into your target level where you have an order on the books, you want to watch where that momentum is. If momentum is picking up faster than you were expecting, for example, like we're seeing here, then it increases the odds that you are going to be able to get a little bit more out of it than what you were originally anticipating. Now, originally anticipating, this is where we would get filled here. Now, if the momentum had picked up substantially, we would go into manual mode and try to manage it on the smaller time frame like the one minute chart. In this case, this is actually a trade that I go ahead and just get out of all of it here. And the reason is that even though this is looking like it picked up here on this five minute time frame, I'm covering still at my original target zone because if we look down at this one minute time frame, notice that we have a shift in momentum still. So it began more quickly but then it did that shift in momentum just like we were talking about a moment ago where it went and slid into our larger target zone as opposed to continuing with a fast continuation. For example, if this had broken right here and just fell quickly at that point, and then at that point it would have said, you know what? this overall momentum is still strong enough that we could easily see it push more quickly into this larger target zone, which would be closer to that equal move. With the shift in momentum, though, that increases the risk that it could easily flush and bounce really strongly here. And what I'm going for on a trade is not necessarily always hitting like those highs and the lows. I mean, that's going to be very hard to accomplish. What I want to get is the most out of the trade with the least risk and without giving up as much of the position as possible. So when I'm seeing this shift in momentum here, that tells me that I'm increasing my risk that this could flush higher very quickly. There is one little thing here on this particular one, and I'm going to show you, have to show you this probably on a tick chart because it's hard to see on the one minute chart. Let me see here. For those of you, once again, that were in the class over the last couple of weeks, and we talked about momentum reversals. This is a momentum shift that took place here. And typically, off of the third low, that is where you will see your reversal trigger. And you'll get a larger break in the trend where it'll bounce more quickly. Now, the thing that was going against this was that as this formed this momentum shift, there's still slower upside here. So you don't have like a deep V pattern. With a stronger momentum reversal where you would definitely get a sharper pullback like this, your momentum is going to be a little bit stronger off that second low, and you'll get a series of Vs. And so it'll look like this. And so that will help give you an even better clue that, okay, this is really high risk as far as trying to get more out of it because it could easily bounce very sharply if you have these V patterns forming. Now, obviously, I didn't have, you know, the smaller time frame up, so we didn't see that. But 
this is still a very good zone where we were able to basically get a large move that took place on that five minute time frame. Um, as far as managing a position, once you're already in it and it's coming into a support zone, a lot of traders will use things like a channel break to get out of a position. I'm not very fond of using channel breaks for a very good reason. What you'll often see is that with a channel break, many times you can get a really strong reversal and you end up giving up too much of your position when that channel break happens. For example, here, let me show you. Right now we are seeing a little bit better V action where we now have a smaller momentum reversal attempting to form here. It's not, not quite as deep here as we would like to see for a strong bounce, but what you can see is that a lot of times when the channels break, they can move really quickly against you, and you can end up giving up a lot of your position in just a matter of seconds many times. And so you want to be able to look at target levels and watch the momentum on the smaller time frame in order to get the most out of your trade. For example, if we had this forming here and we're looking at this and going down and dropping down to these smaller time frames, uh, what you want to see with this momentum reversal here is that if this had gone and formed very clear cut V's, into the second low and then into the third low like this where you had a V top as well and you were using a sort of um, trailing stop, your channel break you would use would actually be off of this third low. But as a target zone, if you're narrowing it down to these smaller time frames, you'd actually connect the first low on the second low and as it's heading into that third low that becomes your target so as it's nearing that level that's where you want to start to take your gains and that's basically when we were looking at the one minute time frame that's where I told you this is why I would go ahead and take the gains on that position right there because it was coming into that lower zone of support. We didn't see this, this um, shift in momentum on that one minute time frame very well. Uh, but if you were dropping down to this tick chart, you could see this a little bit more clearly. So this is a really good example of a trade here um, where you know we're able to follow it basically from the start to the finish. Got a little bit more out of it than we were initially anticipating as far as like what the overall move did. But this is where momentum plays in its part in a setup. And it's very important to not just focus on a single time frame in a security. That's where timing something becomes very crucial. A lot of traders, for example, they'll take a setup on a five minute time frame and they'll just follow it on that five minute time frame. Well, as something is nearing your target zone or nearing your stop level, what you want to do is you want to close in on those smaller time frames. So getting into a position and getting out of a position. These are the times that you want to drop down to these tick charts or the one minute charts. Um, if you have like a five minute setup or even a 15 minute setup, use those smaller charts to time your entries and your exits. And as you could have seen, you know, we, we probably would have gotten a better exit if we were using this tick chart here than if we were using just uh, the one minute chart like we did for the exit. But in reality, using that channel break, if you had used the channel break, notice that that was still very close to what we were looking at as our original target zone already. And this is where, like I said, I don't like using channel breaks because you do give back so much of your position. On the other hand, if you had used the strategy where if you see the momentum shifting and you see more of these Vs forming, you go ahead and take your, your position off as it's hitting that lower channel, then you would have practically nailed that low because you were getting out of it as you were coming into that support zone. And it was also corresponding to that larger support zone that we looked at on the 15 minute time frame, where 
we did have the momentum shifting, but it didn't shift as much as we were originally expecting it to. And so watching those momentum shifts, like I said, very, very crucial. If this had broken down out of our trigger here and bounced up like this, let me just, let's kind of clear this up here, make it a little bit larger. If this had fallen here, hit that first support zone that we were looking at, bounced a little bit more, and then came back lower, then we would have seen this shift in momentum take place on the five minute time frame as well, as opposed to just on this one minute time frame. And if that had been the case, we would have had a very difficult time hitting that larger equal move zone, because this would have shown a shift in momentum that would have been relative to the five minute context, where, and even the 15 minute context, where on this time frame, we would have seen more overlap from one bar to the next on this 15 minute chart as it was coming into right about there. And that's, that's what we were looking at as our original target zone. So usually the momentum is what determines whether you tighten up your position and take your gains quicker than you were originally anticipating, or if you open it up, move your target and give it a little bit more room than what you were anticipating. But you're not always going to see that on a five minute time frame or even a one minute time frame. Sometimes you have to go down and look at those tick charts to help you with that. I hope that you enjoyed this lesson. I'll be kicking off my next boot camp here in just a week. And you can learn more at TonyHanson.com backslash fxbootcamp.html.